the problems with the Nintendo Switch. As both Sony and Microsoft are readying to launch their next-gen consoles, it's time to reflect on the Nintendo Switch and look at how the system could be improved for the next generation. And as this would make an extremely long video, I've decided to split this into two parts. In part one, I will look at the problems with the Nintendo Switch. And in part two, I'll look at how these issues affect Nintendo's next generation console. Number one, power performance. My biggest criticism of the Nintendo Switch is the gap in performance is too large relative to the other consoles. As you can see, when the Switch operates in portable mode, the Switch outputs half the number of pixels as the PS4. While the GPU performance listed is only a ballpark estimate of the capability of the consoles, it is nevertheless obvious that the performance gap is too large when porting games over from the PS4 to the Switch. And this leaves the Switch version having significant corners cut to get the game to run. As an example of what this entails, Let's look at The Outer Worlds, which came out earlier this year on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and then later on the Switch. To get the game to run at a reasonable frame rate on the Switch, the developers ran the game at a dynamic resolution where the game fluctuated between 720p, but mostly between 540p and 384p. At 384p, which is roughly 640 by 384 we're looking at 245,760 pixels, or thereabouts, a drop in one quarter of the number of pixels the GPU has to push out. That's one eighth of the pixels required on the PS4, which mind you, the game also hovers between a resolution of 1080p and 720p. The drop in resolution isn't the only sacrifice. Much of the detail in levels are lost, the grass and trees are gone, Textures are blurry due to memory limitations, which is 4GB on the Switch versus 8GB on the PS4, and all post-processing such as shadowing, anti-aliasing, reflections, particle effects are reduced. And if that doesn't cover it, it also drops in frame rate during particularly demanding moments. All of this to say, sometimes you just need more performance. This isn't the only game. Many first and third party games suffer this fate, like Xenoblade Chronicles, Doom and The Witcher 3. They need more power to do themselves justice. For the Switch 2, the relative performance gap between other consoles need to be reduced. Ideally, the resolution difference should be approximately the performance gap. So if there is a 2x resolution difference, the power difference should also be 2x. Number 2. Industrial Design while this is mostly a personal point of view, the Switch felt a bit archaic considering it was 2017 and there were already many impressive mobiles and tablets with less bezels and thickness than the Nintendo Switch. Even comparing the Vita Slim 2000 to the Nintendo Switch, the Switch is a behemoth of a portable. The size of the Switch came down to two reasons. One, carrying a large battery, and two, the requirement of having a fan cool the CPU. The current battery in the Switch is 4410 mAh, and while it's not overly large when compared to 7-inch tablets on the market, hopefully by 2021, battery tech will have improved so that a much slimmer battery can be used in the Switch too. The fan also added sizable depth to the machine as it sits on top of the screen itself. While many mobiles and tablets are designed without fans, these generally run hot when used intensively. A fan is probably something that the Nintendo Switch 2 may not be able to do without. If it runs 10 watts or higher, it probably needs a fan. At around 5 watts, it could get away without using one. Number 3. Build Quality and Materials The Nintendo Switch feels like it's somewhat cheaply made. Nintendo isn't really known for its industrial design prowess, but the Nintendo Switch just feels like a cheap tablet. For one, the Switch is all plastic, but it feels like the cheap plastic that you find on toys or budget mobile phones. The screen is plastic as well, whereas many higher quality offerings such as smartphones, tablets or even the Vita use glass. 
The Joy-Cons, which feel quite solid when connected to the main unit, have a bit of wiggle, and being detachable devices, it's probably unlikely to ever get rid of that issue. But in general, it would be nice if Nintendo made a device that was a little bit more premium than the Switch. I'd say that their work on the DS Lite or 3DS consoles did a better job on build quality than on the Switch, given the price. In conclusion, this video highlighted some of the bigger issues that I personally have with the Nintendo Switch. Overall, the Switch is a fantastic device, but as I said, this is a video highlighting the flaws of the existing system. It starts with reducing the performance gap between the Switch 2 and the next-gen consoles, and tying that with a better looking sleeker product and improved build quality and materials. That would go a long way in fixing some of Nintendo Switch's problems. In the next video, we're going to look at how Nintendo can create the perfect Nintendo Switch 2, and how likely we are to getting it. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to catch part 2, and please check out all my other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.